Hey guys, how's it going? I'm making this video today to expose Paul Washer. This man is a Pharisee, and he's one of the worst Pharisees of the modern day. He's a crybaby, he's always crying and whining in his sermons, but the real issue with him is that he adds works to the gospel, and he's a damnable heretic for this. He's always pointing a finger, condemning people, making people question their salvation, and this is one of the marks of a false teacher that they condemn everybody based on their works. They preach bad news. They make people doubt that they're really saved, that they're really a Christian. And that's all this man does. I'm going to show you guys some clips to prove what I'm saying. But first, we're going to look at a few verses of what Jesus has to say about the Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So Paul Washer appears righteous. Everybody loves him. Everybody thinks he's such a great man of God. But you guys don't really know what's going on. Matthew 23.13 reads, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye that them that are entering to go in. So how do the Pharisees shut up the kingdom of heaven? They teach a works-based salvation system. So Paul Washer adds works to the gospel, and that doesn't save anybody. Because if you don't trust in Jesus Christ alone, you're not going to get saved. Hearing Paul Washer's false gospel is not going to get you saved. It's just going to bring you under bondage. Now, sometimes a Christian will get saved and then start listening to these false teachers and get deceived. And that doesn't mean they lose their salvation. It just means that they get brought under bondage and false teaching. But you weren't saved by a magic formula or some words you repeated after someone else. You were saved because you repented of your sins and you believed and not only did you do that in the past you continue to do it even until now because when Jesus a proper translation of that verse he gave is this the kingdom of God has come the time is fulfilled now spend the rest of your life repenting of your sins and believing in me all right guys so you heard Paul Washer in that video clip add on to the words of Jesus and also twist what he was saying completely out of context to teach his works-based salvation gospel. So, Revelation 22.18 reads, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now, that's not just talking about adding to the book of Revelation. I believe that that's talking about adding to the whole Bible. So Paul Washer said, you got saved by repenting of your sins. Is that biblical? Absolutely not. Sin is a transgression of God's law. Turning from sin is turning to do the works of the law. Repenting of sins is works of the law. Galatians 2.16 reads, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Any teacher you hear tell you that you need to repent of your sins to be saved is a false teacher. That's somebody who's adding works of the law to faith alone. Now we should repent of our sins. We should turn from them and do good. But to add that to the gospel message of salvation as a requirement, that's absolutely damnable, wicked heresy, and that's not what the Bible teaches. So the gospels do say to uh, repent many times. What does repentance mean in context of salvation when it's said in the gospel? Hebrews 6 1 reads, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. 
So when the Gospels say repent in context of salvation, it's talking about repenting from whatever else you were trusting in before trusting in Christ. It could have been Buddha, Allah, atheism, just trusting in yourself. Or for many people in this time, it was trusting in the works of the law. The Jews were trusting in the works of the law rather than Christ. So repentance in context of the gospel is to turn from whatever else you were trusting in to faith in Jesus Christ. It's not about repenting of sins. Repentance and faith are two sides of the same coin. If you believed in Jesus Christ, you've repented. The Gospel of John is a message of salvation, and that book doesn't use the word repentance once. All it says is believe. These teachers on YouTube who teach repent of your sins to be saved are wicked, damnable heretics. It's not in the Bible. Jonah 3.10 reads, And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Okay, so in Jonah 3.10 it says that God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. So turning from sins, God sees that as a work. I've heard a lot of false teachers say, repentance from your sins isn't a work, but God sees it as a work. So it doesn't matter what they say. The Bible says that repenting of sins is a work. Another thing, God repented 38 times in the Bible. So to say that repentance means turning from sins in every context you would have to be calling God a sinner to say that. In context of the gospel, repentance just means turning from unbelief to belief in Jesus Christ. You say you believe and you have no works? Your faith is hypocritical. It's, it's unreal. It's, it's wrong. No. No. If you don't have works, to help. All right, guys, so you heard it clear as day. Paul Washer said, if you don't have works, you're going to hell. This guy is the most obvious works truster out of all the false teachers. A lot of the false teachers on YouTube are subtle and they say things like, oh, you need evidence that you're saved. Works are just the evidence. But Paul Washer just comes right out and says, if you don't have works, you're going to hell. Wicked heretic. This guy's a bastard. False teachers always add works to the gospel because they haven't believed. They haven't believed the word of God. They haven't believed in Jesus Christ. And they just want to bring everybody else into bondage, condemn everybody, accuse the brethren, make people doubt their salvation. That's the fruit of Paul Washer's ministry. He shuts up the kingdom of heaven. Remember the verse at the beginning of this video, how the Pharisees shut up the kingdom of heaven and they themselves don't enter in. Let's read Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. But Paul Washer says, if you don't have works, you're going to hell. I don't think it's the people who don't have works that are going to hell, man. Who hath believed our report? Galatians 2, 4 reads, And that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage Paul Washer is a false brethren he came in secretly to spy out our liberty in, in Jesus Christ the Pharisees bring people into bondage it's wicked guys and this is the verse that I give to false teachers Hebrews 12 8 they're bastards they're false brethren. They're not brothers in Christ. They're wicked. And Paul Washer is a crybaby Pharisee. He doesn't believe the gospel. He doesn't believe John 3.16. He doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. He's trusting in his works. And it's not going to get him to heaven, guys. I hope you learned something from this video. God bless. Have a good one.